Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, we will see. Uh, so we'll see a demo how we can interact with this Snowflake uh, data warehouse into uh, PySpark. And the PySpark code uh, will be running on the Google product. So what uh, we are going to do here in this. So uh, we will configure Snowflake. Snowflake free account which I have already uh, uh, created. So you, uh, you all can create a Snowflake uh, free account, free tier account. Okay. And uh, whenever you are creating a Snowflake free tier account, it will ask you to create your account. So because it's a cloud data warehousing platform, so it will ask you to create your account either in uh, AWS or in Azure or in GCP. In any of the region, it will ask you to create a Snowflake uh, uh, Twitter account. So once your account is created, so I have already created one account and I have loaded one sample uh, uh, file to my Twitter account. So in this video, what I am going to do, uh, I'll be running, I, I'll be uh, uh, extracting the data. I'll be extracting the data from the Snowflake using PySpark. And then again, I'll uh, load the data to my Snowflake data warehouse using the PySpark only. And this PySpark code, uh, so even you don't, even if you don't have any uh, uh, software or any application like PyCharm or VS Code, if you have not installed, so still also you can run it on the Google Colab, and you can do the practice. Okay, so that is what we are going to see. We'll run the PySpark code in Google Colab and uh, we'll interact with the Snowflake uh, data warehouse. We'll extract the data and then we'll load the data to the Snowflake data warehouse. So uh, let's see the demo. Uh, let me go to my screen where I'm running the PySpark code and uh, on, the, on my Google Colab. So here, as you can see, this is my Snowflake uh, free tier account, which I have already created. And it's pretty simple to create a Snowflake free tier account. So this is the Snowflake uh, new ABY. Okay. So once you create account, uh, so you get uh, 39 days of uh, free tier uh, uh, limit uh, and you can use it. So around $400 of credit you will get uh, for the 39 days of validity. So uh, this is a new uh, UI, which they have uh, introduced recently. And before that, if you, you can also change your UI to your uh, classic UI. If you, if you want to go to the classic console, also you can go there. Okay. Let me log into my classic console. Is, uh, So right now, if you'll see here, I just have one table. So I am going to connect uh, to this uh, database. So this is the database name, PySpark demo. If you'll come here to the data, inside the data, you can see there are three databases. And this is the database, uh, database which I have created. Inside the database, if you go to the schema, you can see the schema is available. I'm going to extract the data from the CSV data schema. Inside the CSV data schema, you can see the tables which is available. So this is my sample table. The table name is JSON, and it is having some <clears throat> sample data. So I can preview the data. So these are uh, there are 14 rows which I have uh, loaded to my station uh, uh, table inside, which is present inside my CSV data. Now let me go to uh, the Google Colab. Okay. So I'll I'll go to my Google Colab. So here, whenever you are uh, uh, using the PySpark in the Google Colab, so first of all you need to install JDK, and you need to install the Spark as well. Okay, on your Google Colab. So once the Spark is installed, then you can import Spark. Okay, you can import the Find Spark, and using the Find Spark, you can uh, create a Spark session. Uh, so uh, as you all know, like you need to have the Spark session in order to in order to 
use the Spark uh, and in order to uh, uh, interact with the Spark, you need to create a Spark system. Then you can set up uh, set some environment variables here in Google Kula. So one is for Java Home, which is needed, also for the Spark Home. So these are the two environment variables which you can set. Apart from these two, then you can uh, just install it and you can set up the environment variable and then you can uh, start the Spark session. So once that is done, then what you need to do is, uh, so you can also, you need to set up the PySpark uh, submit argument environment variable. So this is the variable which you need to uh, use. Okay, this is the value which you need to use. So once the, all the environment variables are set up, so in order to interact with the Snowflake uh, from the PySpark, you need the Snowflake uh, connector. Okay, so for that, you need to install two jar files. So these are the two jar files which will be available in the Maven repository. We'll go to the Maven repository. So it will be available in the Maven repository. Okay. Uh, so these uh, two jar files you can download from the Maven repository and you can upload the two, repo uh, two jar files onto your uh, Google Colab account. Okay. So uh, if possible also, I'll provide a link to this jar file. And then, uh, uh, so once the Spark session is created, so you need to uh, create a uh, Spark filter, okay? And there you need to pass your, in the configuration parameter, you need to Spark, uh, you need to pass a Spark jar file, okay? Spark jar file location, which you need to pass inside the configuration properties. Uh, so uh, let me create the Spark session I have already created. So after the creating the Spark session, uh, so you need to uh, uh, create a Snowflake connection. So where whenever you are uh, trying to build a connection with the Snowflake databases, so these are the parameters which you need to pass. Okay. First one is your Snowflake URL. So which you'll get from here. If you go to your uh, Snowflake uh, console, so uh, in, if you go to the static console, you'll get this uh, uh, URL from this here. Okay. So from the static console, you will get the URL. So once the URL uh, uh, you have uh, updated, then you need to update your account name, Snowflake account name. And then after that, uh, you need to uh, provide your Snowflake username and the password. Okay, so the account name you'll get from here. Okay, this is your Snowflake account name. Also, you'll get from the URL. So this is your Snowflake uh, account name. And then once you have uh, provided the user ID uh, password, then you need to provide to which database you want to interact or you want to extract data from which database and from which schema so that you need to provide and the data warehouse name also you need to provide and the auto role also you need to provide so once that is done so uh, you'll be able to read the data okay from the uh, snowflake uh, uh, table so if i'll run this so I'm going to uh, uh, read the data from this uh, uh, station data uh, station table, which we saw, and there are 14 rows which we are extracting. So this way you can extract the data from the Snowflake uh, table. Also, if you want to uh, put the data, you want to load the data to the Snowflake table, so that also you can do. So for example, this is a sample data set which I am having. Okay, and uh, so here uh, sample data frame which I am creating. So let's uh, just say employee data set. So what I am going to do, uh, I'm, I'm going to load this uh, employee data frame to my Snowflake uh, table. Okay, and my table name will be employee department table. So whenever you want to load the data, same, uh, we, we need to use the data frame dot write format and then the Snowflake uh, source name which I have set up here. So this is a Snowflake source name, the value which I'm passing. And then the options which I have already set up here. So all these options I'm passing, okay, here. And then I'm uh, uh, loading the data. So uh, it will, uh, so I'm writing the data in the append mode to which table. So inside this DB table parameter, you need to mention to which table you are load, you want to load the data. Right now, if you'll, if you'll go, if I go to uh, my schema. So inside this CSV schema, I am going to load, I'm going to create a table and uh, employee department table and I'm going to load the data. So right now there is only one table is available. So if I run this, it's going to load the data. Uh, 
to snowflake table okay so right now the uh, uh, code has uh, run successfully so if i'll go to my snowflake uh, csb uh, schema so i should be able to see the number of tables let me check me refresh it so as you can see the uh, two tables are available so uh, this employee table employee department table has been created i can also see the data i will select the data warehouse and i can preview the data inside this uh, employee data uh, employee department table so as you can see the first name last name gender salary all the data has been loaded to my snowflake uh, uh, table okay so this is how uh, you can use pyspark okay and uh, you can use google collab you can run the pyspark code in the google collab in order to extract and in order to load the data to the snowflake uh, tables uh, thank you